All right, NFL Week 10, let's get right into it. Hit the like button and leave us a comment. Tell us your best bet for this week in the NFL. And as always, if you do not have a hot take or a best bet and you just want to help us out, we're going to go with the word sold. That's a good, good, good nice. solid yes. word, like sold. So uh, it just helps the algorithm, helps helps uh, boost where we rank on YouTube. So just type the word sold, S-O-L-D, in the comment section. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Let's get right into it. Uh, not a whole lot weather wise. Um, I think it, it, a little windy in, in, uh, the, Chicago, but nothing that I think that was really going to affect the game. Pittsburgh, maybe a little bit of, sh- of showers, but I think, I think we're pretty good. So I don't think we need to go over weather a whole lot. So, all right, let us uh, start with passing props. I know that you guys are excited about the Giants and Panthers passing props. I will tell you, uh, my plays are kind of correlated here. I like Daniel Jones under 199 and a half because I don't think they're going to need to throw very much against this terrible Carolina team. I'm not sure why they would throw for 200 yards. I think Tyrone Tracy has a big game. Not sure I'm getting to the window on it, but that's my thought. Corbin? I'm passing on this one. I'm more on the the, uh, running backs for this game. Jim? I'm especially passing because Daniel Jones manages to throw two touchdowns at home after he didn't in like eight straight games as soon as I brought it up. So, yes, I'm passing on the passing props. Are we going back to it, Jim? Is it if it's at one and a half? Are you going to go back to it again? I'm still so mad. No, <laughs> I'm not. And not against Carolina. If it was another That's team. A good maybe. point. That's a good point. And, you know, they're on the road, too. So, I. You, Different, different scenario. Well, this is the Germany game. They're absolutely on the road. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but it, it could be like a Daniel Jones throws for 83 yards and two touchdowns. Exactly. Like, how? How? Why? All right. Let's move on. Let's move on to some teams that everyone actually takes serious. Uh, the Buffalo Bills and the Indianapolis Colts. Flacco laid an absolute egg last week, but that was a really good defense. I don't think this defense is as good. Um, yeah, you could talk me into Flacco over 229. I'm, I don't think this Bills defense is all that great. That being said, I think I'm more interested in running back props in this game. So I'm going to pass. Jim, what do you think? Uh, I would look at the touchdowns possibly for Josh Allen. Uh, it's y- minus 120. I know he they are a bit of a running offense, but they mix their running backs into the passing game so well. I think you have a little extra equity in Allen over one and a half. And uh, we've seen him use a lot, utilizing the tight ends. You're seeing Dawson Knox get some looks, and those are red zone targets with the addition of Mari Cooper and Shakir. I could see him getting over the 1.5. Not a bet yet, but somewhere I'm looking. Corbin? I'm passing again. Vikings and Jaguars. Corbin, I'll go to you. I know you like Darnold, yeah, right? Yeah, I love Darnold. Uh, yeah. Over one and a half uh, passing touchdowns here. He gets the Jags. The Jags have an awful pass defense. They've given up the second most passing touchdowns. He's thrown uh, two and three the last two weeks. Uh, big uh, big player back, Hawkinson being back, I think, adds an extra weapon. I think that's going to be huge, particularly uh, in the red zone. I also like him to go over 244 and a half. Again, I expect him to have a great passing day. He's gone over in two of the last three. Uh, my only worry with that is that it is, it, it, I feel like the Vikings could blow out the Jags quite easily. I, so maybe not so close. So I'll take the passing touchdowns, one and a half. Jim? You nailed it. You nailed it. It could be blowout, take the touchdowns, not the yards. Uh, Broncos and the Chiefs. I talked about Bo Nicks under 210 and a half on Wednesday. That sucker is all the way down to 202 and a half. I still like it. Bo Nicks was a play on last week for me, you guys know. And he got over on the last offensive play when he had like 170 passing yards in the first half and then got completely shut down. And this is probably the best defense they're going to face. I think this is a this is a rough spot for Bo Nix. I think Steve Spagnuolo is not going to have any trouble uh, confusing him and showing him up. Yeah. So I would still play it at two, two and a half. I hate playing it when the line moves that much, but I'm certainly not going over. So I'll take the under on Bo Nix. Corbin? Uh, you nailed it. Bo Nix under uh, Arrowhead, one of the hardest places to play. Road, Obviously, road game. Uh, Chiefs have held Carl Mayfield and Herbert under this total. I was uh, actually waiting to see if there was an alt under just to give some breathing room. There's currently no alts out at DraftKings, but if you can get an alt all the way up to like 220, 230, I, I would highly recommend that as a parlay piece as well. So, Jim? Uh, Bo Nix interception. 
Mm. And again, mm. Patrick Holmes interception. <laughs> <laughs> I think you play them both. <laughs> you just wait. It is the division game. We have to remember that uh, you know teams are teams, but division games play out very, very different. These teams are familiar with each other. So yeah. you can get plus money on the Patrick Mahomes, the minus 155 on Bonix. Like you said, he's going up against a juggernaut in this defense. And, you know, it, it is the best defense he's going to see. Uh, in my opinion, it's become the best defense in the league. They just mm -hmm. shut teams down. I I agree with that best defense. They're just a they're a wrecking crew, man. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to a couple teams that are not wrecking crews on defense. <laughs> the Falcons and the Saints. Uh, Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. Uh, boy, Derek Carr. Vicious, vicious words. Uh, I, 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 he's getting the start. Does not seem like he's very well liked in the locker room. That being said. Um, I think it's now 65 out of the last 68 games. Kirk Cousins has thrown at least one touchdown. It's the parlay piece that keeps on giving. So, uh, yeah, I, that's kind of what I would do passing props. I don't really have much else on this one, Corbin. No, if anything, I would look at a Cousins under. I don't see him throwing for very long, quite honestly. I think they're going to get out quite easily and just run the ball. So, But pass. Jim? Uh, new Look, coach fired. Sometimes teams come out with a little bit of more giddy up in their step here. Uh, the whole staff is gone, right? <laughs> they, they they cleaned house a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, just nothing as far as props wise. He, to me, I have nothing. I would look Kirk Cousins' way. Like you said, parlay the one touchdown with something. I promise we're going to get to a lot of plays we like mm -hmm. once we get to rushing and receiving. It's just not a great week for passing props. No. And what do we always say? Best way to make money is not lose it. Don't just don't you don't need to fire off a bunch of really big uh, plays on passing. So uh, Steelers and commanders. I kind of like Russell Wilson under here. Uh, again, I'll talk about rushing props, but I don't think I don't think the, the Steelers are going to need to throw the ball that much. I think this is a big Najee Harris and Jalen Warren game. I think this game is close. Uh, my only worry is if there is like a you can get so many yards on those like those drives right before the half or at yeah. the end of the game or something. That's the only thing that worries me. Cause I think this is going to be a great game, but uh, I lean under on Russell Wilson. Jim, what do you think? I have nothing on this one. Corbin pass 49ers of Buccaneers. Jim, I know you're going back to Baker Baker Mayfield, two touchdown passes, <laughs> set it and he's forget it. it. I don't care what receiver he has. I don't care what defense he's playing against. Play the Baker two touchdowns. I've already played it. It's in my account. <laughs> Corbin? <laughs> uh, you, I can't argue with it. I, I haven't played it this whole time, so I, I, I would feel wrong jumping on it now. But, yeah, uh, I, I like Purdy over 260. Uh, Bucks have been awful against the pass. Uh, my only worry, he hasn't gone over this in four straight, but uh, I think that's a good matchup for him to get back on track. McCaffrey's back. That's going to get him some receiving yards. Juwan Jennings is back. That's another weapon. Uh, and I don't really worry too much about a blowout because I feel like the Bucks always make every game competitive because Mayfield's having such a good year. So that's where I'm looking. Patriots at Bears. Uh, yeah, Drake May, over 194. Mm -hmm. 100%. He had 206, an overtime game against Tennessee. Uh, 276 against Jacksonville. 243 against Houston. Bears are a good defense, but... I don't know, man. Anytime I get a quarterback that I know is going to throw the ball 35 plus times and it's below 200, I'm going to take it. Hunter, Hunter Henry could, you know, nice weapon there. I, they, they, they might be in a little bit of comeback mode here. I just, Jim, it's, it's too low. You, I, it I just, too low. It's just too low. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. so, it's, it's too low. He's, he's not an, an inept quarterback. Like he's not the Sean Watson. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, right. They keep lining him like he's lost. And yes, the team is horrible, but Drake May is throwing the ball. And he's not going to sit back there and take an ass kicking. And you could be damn sure that the coaching staff said, throw the ball. Don't hold it long. Just let it fly. We don't care about interceptions. Do they even care about wins? No. <laughs> get rid of the ball and get your experience. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Corbin, you like any passing props? It's a pass again from me. Titans and Chargers. Uh, I'm tempted by Will Levis over, but I heard a great stat about the Chargers. They run the play clock down to 30, 31 seconds, 
and like no team scored more than 21 points. They just bleed the clock out and the team just doesn't get a lot of possessions here. Um, I just did a rant about, you know, that that number's too low, but I just think Drake May's so much better than Will Levis. So much better than Will Levis. So I can't I can't get I can't get to the window, Corbin. Again, I almost lean both of these to go under, quite honestly. I just I think both teams are gonna be running the ball. I think the clock's gonna be running. I don't see I don't see a world that Herbert needs to throw to this kind of total here. We've mentioned that the Titans have had a pretty good defense this year, although there's some holes in there. It's I I can't play anything. Maybe a Levis interception. Uh, Jim Eagles and Cowboys. Uh, which would take Cooper Rush. The Cooper Rush era is here. You excited? He looks so excited. I'm excited <laughs> to not watch Dak anymore. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I, I just Here we go. I've never been a Dak. <laughs> I've never been a Dak fan since day one. I just haven't. Um, as soon as I heard that he had to take painkillers and get his leg numb to get his big giant tattoo, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's part of the game. You want the ink, you got to put up with it. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know, man. This this Eagles offense is just. I know they keep scoring points and winning, but there's something about it. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to rushing. I, I'd rather attack the rushing in this game. Oh, I see the rushing. Um, <laughs> I'll take Cooper Rush under two hundred seven and a half. I've I've watched this guy play a little bit, and <clears throat> he's just a half step behind a little bit. He's not going to do anything stupid, but he's also not going to make the amazing throw. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is an Eagles ass kicking, to be honest. Um, so I. Could see a huge Saquon Barkley game where the Cowboys just don't get a lot of plays in this game. So, uh, Jets at the Cardinals. Jim, you were interested in Aaron Rodgers props. Uh, yeah, two and a, uh, over one and a half touchdowns. Uh, I think we're to the point now where we kind of know, well, we definitely know what the Jets offense is going to try to do. They're going to try to run the ball. It's probably going to be unsuccessful, and they're going to resort to relying on Aaron Rodgers' arm. And when they get down in the red zone, he has two bookend receivers that he can throw to. They've got rid of Mike Williams. I believe Alan Lazard is back. So now we're going to have the full complement of Wilson, Lazard, and uh, Adams, which is, that's who Rodgers wants out there. Uh, we've seen them involve Malachi Corley, even though he dropped the ball before the end zone. I can see him getting some more touches down in the red zone and Brees Hall in the passing game. Um, I think they're a throwing team. I, I've i watched every play. I don't see a dominating run offense when they're down at the five. They get down there and they throw the ball. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as the Bucks, really. Yeah. It's the same style offense. Corbin, you like any of these guys? Uh, I like Murray under 201 passing yards. He's gone under in four of the last six. The Jets still have the second best pass defense. I still I still think they're pretty good. I The uh, Cardinals don't have that many wide receiver threats. I think they're going to lock down Harrison, and that kind of just leads McBride. And that's kind of it to me. I don't see how he gets to this total. I also like Rodgers to throw for uh, more passing yards than Kyler Murray. It's mm-hmm. minus 220, so you'd have to parlay it with something but it wouldn't take much to get that playable i think rogers is going to have way more yards passing than murray quite honestly so uh detroit lions and the houston texans interesting that they got both of these at the same number because i i would just think that golf would probably throw for more than stroud jim you want to just remind everybody what you noticed about the texans and this offensive line it's bad it's real bad <laughs> like it, it, it's top five bad easy um, the penalties are a big problem. The interior is a big problem. And I think that's what's been affecting Stroud more so than the edge pass rusters. It's just, this guy's in his face and he's just not used to it. He hasn't experienced it in his first season. And Laramie Tunsil, who was one of the best left tackles in the league, has become the most penalized tackle in the league overnight. So they're just clunky without his complement of receivers. Uh, the Lions pick up another pass rusher to replace Hutchinson in this spot. So I don't like the Stroud over 230. I think he's going to really struggle against this Lions team. And if the Lions get up, we saw what they're going to do. They're going to take those two running backs and line them up, and they're going to run them every play. And they're each going to have 15 to 18 carries apiece. Yeah, Lions could be up big in this spot. I agree. Corbin, what do you think? It's a pass for me. 
All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, I want to tell everyone about a couple specials that we have up. Uh, we've been talking about this for the last couple of days. Darts plays. We're running a special for the rest of 2024, only $49. We're 20 and 9 at the time of recording this in darts plays. We keep telling everyone, we know it's NFL season. It's college basketball season, college football. But darts is a sport that the books are just not paying attention to. And that is in our wheelhouse. That is where we do a lot of our damage is these soft lines that provide great value. And when you get these lines that are so out of whack and are so in our favor, you got to take advantage of it. And that's what we've done. Corbin has done such a great job with darts over the last couple of years. And Corbin, if you want to explain just this time of year, why we're doing this special from now to the end of the year on this. Yeah, so basically there's uh, two really big tournaments, free in total, between now and the end of the year. This is the one the players spend all year preparing for. It's the World Championships uh, in December. At the minute, it's the Grand Slam of darts. They're just... I, I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. How often do you get to bet against part-time players who are not professional? Like the, like the, literally half the field will have jobs like I know there's electricians and plumbers against like top ten professionals who are doing this week in and week out, and you're getting lines like minus five hundred, six hundred on these kind of players. It's it's a complete mismatch. So yeah, this is one of our theories in UFC, and it works great. You're fa- you're fading the part-time gig. And like whenever you get a UFC fighter, a full time fighter who's fighting a part time guy like a realtor or photographer, which has happened, Mm -hmm. you got to take advantage of it. And darts, believe it or not, gives us this amazing opportunity. So it's only forty nine bucks for the rest of the year. So really encourage everyone to go grab that. That is on the profile page there. Uh, We do have an NFL Week Ten pack up. Six straight profitable weeks, guys. Nice work. Yes. Nice work. So. I, I'll be honest. Our plays the first couple of weeks of the season were just not good. We're like, yeah, we got a hole to dig out of. And uh, six straight winning weeks is uh, really, really good. So that week 10 pack is up. All plays will be included in that one. All right, let's get back to rushing props. All right, now we're going to have some actionable info here. Uh, Tyrone Tracy over 73 and a half, 100%. Yep. Panthers team that is now dead last in yards per game. Uh, why would the Giants screw around with Daniel Jones underhanding, lobbing the ball to his out of bounds or whatever whatever he does? Hand the ball to Tyrone Tracy. Tracy's got the job. He's good. 73 and a half is just a no-brainer for me. Jim, what do you think? I agree 100%. Uh, I actually like the under on Chuba. This Giants no. defense. No. <laughs> Plus, here's the best part. Just got the contract. It's it just screams like all right I'm paid this team stinks. <laughs> we'll see a fumble on the first quarter. He won't get a couple touches. Um, yeah, I love Tracy over and I like the Chuba under. Uh, this Giants defense is the defensive line specifically is playing well. We'll get to that later. Um, yeah. All right, Corbin, do you like Chuba over? Yeah, I love Chuba over this week. He's getting the Giants who rank 29th versus the run. They suck. The Panthers are at their best. When when Hubbard is running the ball, the Panthers are at their best. It's going to be a close game at worst. He's gone this. over in five of the last seven. And one and the two that he didn't, they were down big. I, I love this spot for him. Oh, this is great. Uh, this is in. good. It, it's stats versus narrative. I'm narrative <laughs> Corbin stats. This will be fun to see how it plays out. Get up early, guys, and tune into Jim and Corbin going head to head over <laughs> Chuba Hubbard's rush. the Twitter <laughs> battle of the year. It's great. It's great. Uh, Buffalo Bills at the Indianapolis Colts. I got to tell you guys, every time I watch the Buffalo Bills, the opposing team's running back is just ripping off eight yard plays. Mm-hmm. Run, big, big, big chunks. Pass big chunks, and then the books fire off 81 <laughs> and a half yards on Jonathan Taylor. Uh, they the books beat me. The I was <laughs> hoping to get something in the high 60s, early 70s. I just cannot take Jonathan Taylor, so um, I can't get to the window on it, uh, unfortunately. Now, could he go for 112? 100 could he have 130 rushing plus receiving? Yeah, because. That's what the Colts are probably going to do because that's a Bill's weakness, but I I, I can't get there. So, uh, Jim, you want to talk Ray Davis? Yeah, he's getting more looks. He's getting more looks. I think the Bills have identified that they're going to need James Cook fresh and ready to go, especially mm. after the turf toe injury. Um, 
And Ray Davis is the guy. He is the second in line. It is not Johnson. It is Davis. Uh, we've seen him also mix in in the passing game. He's just getting the touches when this team is up. He's even getting first quarter, second quarter touches. So when this volume keeps on increasing and we can beat the books before they can identify the fact that he's going to have six carries. If he has six carries, he goes over this 20 and a half. It, it's that agree. simple. Um, I also still like the James Cook rushing and receiving. I know it went under last week, uh, but there was a couple plays there. Again, if he gets that pass instead of Davis, that was 70 yards. So that number's a little deceiving. Again, it's still at 84, but we could have had 70 of that to James Cook <laughs> Or Ray Davis. So yeah. I like the running backs for Buffalo. I think that's where their bread is buttered. And, and I'm with you just by comparison. I like James Cook 84 and a half or Jonathan Taylor 108 and a half. I I would rather have the James Cook 84 and a half. It's such a monster number on Jonathan Taylor. Corbin, what are your thoughts on rushing props in this game? Uh Jim's already nailed it. I love Ray Davis. Over in three of the last four, the one he didn't was last week uh, where he finished on 20 exactly, and he gets a better matchup versus the Colts who have the second-worst rush defense. So I love that play. Vikings and the Jaguars. Uh, I You want to talk about a team I want nothing to do with right now. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, <laughs> Good luck figuring out the Tank Bigsby, Travis Etienne thing. Um, I do like Aaron Jones, 69.5 potential for blowout potential that he's got like i don't know 50 yards rushing going into the fourth quarter and then all of a sudden gets it's there and jones show and ends up with 80 yards um with a big fourth quarter so Corey, what do you think about the rushing props it's a pass for me on this game i uh, don't like the jags props at all but kind of lean the aaron jones as well so jim uh again blowout potential i want to look at the second running back no listing yet i'll keep an eye on it and wait for it Broncos and the Chiefs. Yeah. Corbin, you like in Kareem Hunt? I love Kareem Hunt over his rush attempts. I think it's at 18 and a half. I don't understand this line. I think they're gonna be I think they're gonna be up. I think they're gonna be running the ball. Hunt's last four games, he's had 27, 21, 22, and 27 rush attempts. I don't know where they have pulled 18 and a half from. I think he's gonna get into the twenties. It's one of my uh, favorite plays of the week. Jim, what do you like I, in this one? I agree. Uh, I love that way more than his yardage total. Yeah. Mm, okay. <sighs> Who would have thought Kareem Hunt beginning of the year? 2024. 20. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Falcons and the Saints. A lot of big names here, actually, uh, for rushing props. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about the biggest one, Corbin. Kirk Cousins. Uh, <laughs> under, <laughs> under half a yard. He has one game over zero yards. That was a nail biter against uh, Tampa Bay. In that game, he had 16 yards. This is my favorite stat of the season. In that game, Kirk Cousins had 16 yards rushing. His total for the year is minus three. He's lost that, that many yardages in the other games. So uh, it's Kirk Cousins completely under. Corbin, who are you liking? I love uh, Algier over 37 and a half. So he's only over this in uh, three games this year. But the one he, one of the ones he went over was the Saints, where he went over massively. They rank uh, 25th against the run. It's just a dumpster fire at the Saints right now. I think the Falcons are going to be up and Algier is going to be running the ball. So I'll take 37 and a half over. Jim? Explain this Taysom Hill 27 and a half to me. <laughs> What they has happened? This they have no offense. I, I know, and and neither do they have with him. He's been hurt all year. He, he doesn't even sniff this number last week. Like, are they are they just going to say like, is this banking on Derek Carr getting benched? Is this banking on why why are we at twenty seven and a half? This should be like eighteen. This is a, this <laughs> seventeen. Is a, this is a sneaky good one. I like where you're going with this. Hmm. I I love under thirty yards rushing. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Good stuff, Jim. That's a great find. I I, I, did, I didn't even think to look at this Taysom Hill under, but that, like, have you, have you a seen a look. Taysom Hill highlight all season? No, you're right. He's been that means up. it's coming this week. Now that you said that, <laughs> what's that? That means it's, it's coming this week. This now, yeah, well, now that is my Midas that. touch that I've had lately? So. <laughs> or, or this could be just like the three carries for 11 yards and two touchdowns, and he's on yeah. their bench in fantasy football. Uh, so, uh, Steelers and Commanders uh, Corbin you and I both love Najee Harris I'll let you talk about Najee 
Yeah, I love uh, Naji Harris this week. It seems like a low total. I was expecting this in the 70s. Three straight 100-plus rushing games. Commanders ranked 28th against the run. I always feel like the Steelers, no matter who's at quarterback, are at their best when they have their running backs running, quite honestly. I think at worst that this is a clo- close game. If not, I actually could see the Steelers having a lead here. Uh, so I love uh, Harris to go over. Another way I was looking at also playing it is him to just have more rushing yards than Austin Eckler. It's minus 220 again, but I think he easily beats Eckler. Eckler's had 42 versus the Giants, who we mentioned earlier how bad their rush defense is. 52 versus the Bears, 17 and 21. And it's only minus 220. Wow. That's a good find. That's a a, a great find. Uh, Jim, do you like any of these rushing props? No. (laughs) (laughs) You guys nailed it. I have nothing extra whatsoever. 49ers and Buccaneers. Uh, yeah. Before you start, I would like to remind you guys of a uh, of a little bet that we had on the 49ers Christian McCaffrey. You guys oh, asked me whether Luke McCaffrey would get more fantasy <laughs> points than Christian McCaffrey, and I laughed at you. And you guys said, "We'll see. We'll see when he comes back." Well, guys, he's back this week, and I do not remember Luke McCaffrey doing anything while <laughs> Christian's I'm, I'm, been gone. I'm actually surprised Christian McCaffrey made it back. I, 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 I thought I thought for sure this was going towards a season ending mm-hmm. ending injury. So um well, did you look up the total on Luke McCaffrey? No, but I, I don't need to do the maths to work I'll out. Find it's probably like eight points. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't need to do the maths to know that Christian probably goes over his whole total in this one game. Oh, this so. is great. Good. Um well let's start with that. Corbin, do you expect? Oh, I'm going to take. I'm going to take both his overs. I'm going to take over his rushing. Oh, wow. I'm going to take over his receiving. I love players coming back from injury. I think he's going to get straight back to it. I think they've purposely picked this game. I think it's going to be ideal for him. He, I've seen his quotes. He looks ready to go. I think he's so keen. If I had to pick one, I'm going to pick the receiving because I think he's going to take less hits and less damage. In the receiving game, it's kind of a nice way to bed him in. But I think I think he's going to go over on both of them. Quite honestly, I love you guys. Know I love playing players back from injury. So. I'm I'm pretty surprised. I don't know what snap count he's going to be on. Man, if you're San Fran, do you really want to give him a big workload? Oh, that would be. Terrible. Did he need a big workload to get to these kind of totals though? For him, I, I mean, I guess if he's rushing, yeah. Maybe the rushing. I'm rushing, yeah. That, that's 65 and a half. So. I mean, we love this Najee is a good at 66. Defense, so. Like, yeah, and Tampa, I like Purdy to throw the ball a ton. So I, 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 that, that's an interesting take. I would. I I was thinking under was the obvious way to go. Um, Jim, what do you think? I actually kind of like Bucky Irving over 33 and a half. He's kind of the, the running guy on this Tampa Bay team. So, so it just seems like a low total for a guy that's probably going to get, what, 8 to 10 mm-hmm. rush they, attempts? They showed us they're going to lean on these running backs. Uh, I think they showed us that very evidently last week with the receivers out that Bucky Irving and Rashad White are going to be used in the rushing and the receiving game. Bucky more so the rushing, but he got a lot of targets in the past game. I think that teams are keying in on Rashad White that when he's in, it's like obvious pass. So we got to throw it to Bucky and see from there. Uh, I went a different way with this. I really like the Mayfield over 13 and a half. I think they're going to be down. I like. I expect San Francisco to win this game, um, and we've seen Baker make no bones about it. He will run for a first down and lower his shoulder into whoever is in his way. He's the heart and soul of this team. He's going to put him on his back and go. Uh, Thirteen and a half to me seems a little bit low with this pass rush, and we also saw against the Chiefs this Bucks offense is getting a little one dimensional. Mm. A lot of pressure on Baker. A lot of hits. A lot of sacks. I would not be shocked to see him sail over 13 and a half escape in the pass rush. He's also going over in four of the last five. Yeah, which he's I running, like. That's another one on my list. So. Oh, good. Good. Uh, let's take a look at the Patriots and the Bears. I don't have any takes. I think these lines are all kind of dialed in pretty decent. Corbin, you like any of these rushing uh, props? Pass. Titans and the Chargers. Yeah. Uh, Corbin, you like Pollard? I like Pollard over his rush attempts this week. It's another one I don't quite understand. His rush attempts are at 15 and a half. He's gone over in five straight and he had 28 last week. Again, I don't I don't know where they're finding 15 and a half. I know that uh, we talked about the Chargers bleeding the clock. 
but he's he's going over this total even in big like big losses. I think I think either way he's going to go over 15 and, a, 15 and a half. And at plus money, I'll take it. So, uh, Jim, great spot, Corbin. Great, 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 great call. Even when this team is down, they still run the ball with Pollard. Yeah. They try to, at least. <laughs> so yeah, the fifteen and a half seems low to me. Um, Saquon Barkley's total is at nineteen and a half attempts here. Uh, yeah, I think this is a Saquon game. Massive total at ninety and a half, but man, this just screams Eagles just pounding, pounding, pounding. That being said, I actually like Rico Dowdle forty four and a half with Cooper Rush, bang up CD Lamb. I, like I just think Dowdle, they just kind of give the ball to a ton. Um, Corbin sneaky play on Kenneth Gainwell. No, uh, game. No, no, I don't okay. want to game well this week. I like, the, I like the I idea. Like I like the thinking. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't like game well anymore. Like I don't like game well, but thirteen and a half <laughs> yards in a blowout scenario. Yeah, I'll take it. I don't, I don't like predicting, predicting blowouts. I mean, obviously, there are some teams where you can just kind of. Like the Panthers, most like mm. when they're not when they're playing a good team, they're getting blown out. Jacksonville sure looks like they're on track to to eat some blowouts here. I think the Cowboys are next in line to just start getting some getting blown out. Like I know these guys are professional athletes, but man, their season has just been a disaster. So if it's a blowout, I think Gainwell smokes this thirteen and a half total. Of course, if it's I think, a close so, game, it's probably not going to happen. I think it's another one you can take live. I feel like mm, he's not going to get the carries true. at the start of the game. I feel like the number's going to start slowly creeping down, and then you can get him at like eight or something going into the second half. That 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 might be a better way to approach it. Then you can actually see the game script going on. So like it, uh, Jets and Cardinals. So Jim, are you not liking the the over rushing? I'm or? not playing any running backs in this game. It's going to be Kyler Murray or to over twenty seven and a half rushing. Oh, okay. That's simple. Our linebackers, we have one linebacker that is fast enough to stay with this guy. Huh. I think uh, the Jets pass rush, second week with Hassan Reddick. Will McDonald has a lot of speed. We have two really quick pass rushers on the outside. And Quinny Williams has showed up. So I think Kyler's going to have to use his legs this game. So I take him over the 27 and a half. If he gets past that initial pass rush, I think he can really get around our linebackers if it's not Quinnen Williams. He's the only one that has any remote speed to be able to catch him. Corbin, what do you think? Pass. Detroit Lions and Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. Jim, you were talking about Gibbs and Montgomery. Do you play both or do you try and pick one? That's the worst part about these guys. It's like, infuriating. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a nightmare. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I don't know what you do with this one, to be honest with you. I, I You would think it's Montgomery. I, I think you look at these two running backs and you take the lower total in a game like this. That makes uh, sense. You don't know what's going to happen with this O-line with Houston. And I think they try to split the workload a lot. We've seen a couple big games recently from Gibbs. And at some point, you're going to see the Lions go, you know, David, you're healthy again. This is your game. So I would rather take the 57 and a half on Montgomery than the 61 on Gibbs. Uh, well, I'll, be, I'll be the guy that goes for Gibbs. I feel like you normally go Montgomery and I not again. Go Gibbs. <laughs> we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Um, I love Gibbs. He's gone over this total in every week since week one. You can also get great live totals on these because they normally st it normally starts off with Montgomery running and then Gibbs comes on later. I've got a lower total on Gibbs live every single week and it's worked well. He has so much speed. I think they're going to be up in this game. The Texans... Uh, rush uh, defense on paper doesn't look too bad, but then you look at the recent totals they've given up. 74 to Brees Hall, who we've mentioned is really struggling to run the ball. Uh, Taylor had 105, Jacob 76, Cook 82, Bigsby 90, and ETN 50, Aaron Jones 102. I think, again, I think both of these go over. If I had to pick one, I'm picking Gibbs every time. Uh, also quite like the Mixon, under 79 and a half. He's gone four straight for 100 plus, and I know they've had struggles in the passing game, but I think the blowout is going to have a huge impact on this. Uh, I may take a, a total live. The Lions rank seventh uh, and have a great 
uh, rush defense. Also looking at Stroud over. I like playing Stroud over in games where they're close or competitive. He's gone over in five of the last seven. I think he's going to have to run to make something happen. So I quite like all three of those. Love it. Love it. All right. Andy, we going under a half on Jared Goff? Oh, he's. We could. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if they're up, yeah, they're, he's going to kneel. And I think this Texans team is in real trouble. So, yeah, it's another under. Parlay, Cousins, and, and Goff. Uh, <laughs> you could do the – the we need the, the Cousins parlay, which is over his rush attempts and under his – I will his, say, Goff, I was just looking at Goff, Goff's total. So he has minus two, one, minus four, five, minus two, six, five, seven. So it's not it's not quite as nailed on as Cousins. Sure. But- no, he is too yeah. good Achilles. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move to the receiving props here, guys. Uh, I I have absolutely nothing in the Giants Panthers. Either of you guys? I do. Oh I have God. Jalen Coker over 29 and a half. I'm not going to pretend I know the most about him, but he's gone over in four of the last six and he had 36 and 78 the last two weeks. Okay. Uh, the giants are, the giants are not good. They're not going to be putting that much pressure. I don't think on, uh, on Bryce Young. I think it could be a nice spot to get to build his confidence again in between Chuba running them down. My, uh, one issue is I, he only had two receptions last week, but if I had to pick, that's where I was looking. Uh, I'm just moving to the Bills and the Colts. Going back to Josh Downs, Jim, or it's else? me that no, I, I normally play Downs, but uh, I'm I I'm going to start playing him live. Uh, I like his receptions more than his yards. His his receptions is at six and a half. Uh, with the juice to the under, if I remember. Wow, yeah, minus 135. He, he normally hits six, exactly, so often. And Flacco's actually started fairly slow the last couple, and I've got a live line. Like, I don't think Downs had a single reception, if I remember, till midway through the second, maybe even into the second half. Uh, you can get a live line on him, like over four, four and a half kind of territory. So he's one I want to play live, not before. All right. Jim, you like any of these? I was thinking about Pierce again. Um, you know, got him last week. Lower number. Uh, I think they kind of read what's in the tea leaves here. Andy, you're the Colts guy. I mean, the announcers bill him as their big play target. If he's their big play target, and we think that Flacco is going to be throwing the ball against this this Bucks D, I mean, don't you think Pierce gets at least one to two deep downfield targets? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, is that legitimate? He's, he's going to get the looks. Threat? He's going to yeah. get the looks. He's going to get a couple times where he gets behind the defense, and yeah, then he's going to get a look. So, um, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Uh, I can't figure anything out with the Buffalo Bills <laughs> passing game. Yeah, Good luck on that one. Uh, Vikings and Jags. Corbin, big number on Justin Jefferson. Uh, like it? It's it's a pass not for big me. Enough. <laughs> go for it, Jim. Go for it. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. We just saw what <laughs> Jamar Chase did on Thursday night. And if you think for one second that these receivers don't keep track of who's got big games and who's in the press, you're wrong. This is Justin Jefferson absolutely smoking this Jaguars secondary. I mean, well, we could see a 70 yard play here. This secondary is so bad. Where Sam just play action and goes downfield to Jefferson, piece of cake. I, I don't think it's low enough. I think it's Jefferson over. It's an interesting point about trying to keep up with Jamar Chase. There's a team to do it against. Mm-hmm. He's got it. So uh, Broncos and the Chiefs. Look at all these guys <laughs> they have that lined out. Uh, Corbin, would you, would you what do you think about this this one? Broncos and Chiefs. Uh, the only thing I like is Javante Williams, but I'll mention him in my old play that I've got coming. All up. right, Jim. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Nothing in this game. I'm with you. There's just a ton. I guess the only thing is uh, the Chiefs continue to be the worst in the league against tight ends. So um, if you can take advantage of that somehow, I don't know how, but whatever. Uh, Fal- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's> the Bronx. <laughs> Here's another weird one. Falcons and Saints. I didn't know that this many people were going to catch the catch the ball against them. But uh, Corbin, what do you think about this game? 
Uh, I have two plays. One of them is I love Kamara, even at his normal totals, but I'll mention that when I get to my ult as well. I love Valdez Scantling under two and a half receptions. I I he's just not good. I have painfully had to watch a lot of him over the years. He can't catch. He has some speed, but he just he doesn't have that same ability. He had uh one reception last week in his first game for the Saints, got five y- five yards, did nothing with it, and played forty one percent of the snaps. Uh he did nothing all year with the Bills. I just I don't see him doing anything again. I, I could take his under on his yards or his receptions. Personally the receptions though. Jim Sneaky uh, stat here. Taysom Hill, we'll go back to him, has gone over 16 and a half yards receiving in two consecutive mm. games. Mm. Don't really think about him so much as a receiver, but on an offense that is void of talent. Yeah. That's what I mean. I don't, maybe he doesn't get the work as a running back and he plays more of this H back receiving back role. So he's gone over two straight games. He's been a big part of his offense for receptions one week. Uh, I know it's Dink and Dunk at small plays, but he is a guy that could take one for 10. And then you're really just kind of waiting on one or two more looks from there. Uh, Steelers and the Commanders. Uh, I don't really have anything. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything for this one. Corbin? Noah Brown is the only one that I'm looking at. I, I can't work out if I want 37 and a half or as long as over 17 and a half. I feel like he has to hit the over 17 and a half to get to the 37 anyway. He's gone over uh uh, uh he's gone over 17 and a half longest total. Uh three of the last four. He seems to be the commander's kind of deep threat for that kind of stuff. That's the only player I can somewhat get in there. So yeah. Jim, pass. 49ers at the Buccaneers. I really like Juwan Jennings over 42 and a half. I, that number sticks out. Corbin, this fits into your guy coming back from injury theory. Uh, no, I, I, I know, I know McCaffrey's going to be there and I know Debo is going to be there, but this guy can do this in one pass. Uh, oh. So what do you think? Yeah, you nailed it. I'm playing Jennings and McCaffrey. I've already mentioned McCaffrey, so I won't go over him again, but yeah, I love these guys coming back off injuries. He's, Debo hasn't been cutting it this year when I've watched him. I think it's a Kittle and Jawan Jennings. 42 and a half for Jennings this year seems quite generous. I, I, I quite like it. So they're the two I'm looking at for receiving. Jim, give me K. Otten. If you line yeah. it under 60 <laughs> yards, I'm betting K. Otten. He's getting too many looks. Just too many looks. We saw last week there is design play after design play after design play, which is so obviously designed for him to get open. Like he is their receiving target. Uh, you said it before as well. How does Rashad White's number go up to 27 and a half? Mm-hmm. So we're up from last week, even though he goes under. Bit of an overcorrection, perhaps. I like the Bucky Irving 15 and a half. If he's going to get the looks in the receiving game, I'd rather That's play that 15 look. if it's a 50-50 split here. That's a great look. Great look. Um, let's do the Patriots and the Bears. Oh, no, nothing. I want nothing. Jim? Yeah, the only way you can look on the Patriots, which I, I've been looking, is, is Hunter Henry. Yeah. Um, he just seems to be like Drake May safety blanket, but he's going to need to do it with – he's going to need to get 50 with about four catches. So yeah. nothing <laughs> for me to put my money on yet. I, I don't know if he gets that kind of volume. Corbin? Pass. <laughs> All right. We'll move to Titans and the Chargers. I just think these are running – this is a running back game. Um, uh, this Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnson, man, is that so low. Uh, I, like, I know we we think Justin Herbert's probably going to go under the 228, but, man, like he's, he's not going to not throw the ball at all. Mm-hmm. So who's going to catch it? I know Lad McConkey's probably the number one, but if you're going to give me these three guys and Josh Palmer's – the lowest at 28 and a half, I would probably take him. So Jim, this will Disley number looks a little low. Okay. I understand great pass defense and great against tight ends. We were talking about it last week with the Patriots, Uh, but 22 is a low number. That is a really no number. That can be two catches and you're done. You're out. Yeah. Corbin pass Eagles and the Cowboys. Um, CD lamb under, just think it's going to be too easy for Philly to key in on them. And you got Cooper rush throwing them the ball. Uh, if they get down, you're going to see a pretty dejected CD lamb. So I think that would be the way that I would be looking at it. I would look at Rico Dowdle over 12 and a half 
if he's the guy out there getting the, the dump off passes from from the, Rico Dowdle could have like eight catches for 19 yards uh, with these little dump offs and Cooper Rush mm-hmm. checking it down. So that's how I would look at it. Um, I would like to take some kind of over for the Eagles passing game because I do think they're going to pass the ball, but just don't know how much it's going to be needed. What do you think, Corbin? I I'm going to be honest. I was going to pass on this game. The only name that kind of uh, attracts my attention is that I can't say his name. Cal Great. Cal Katera. I don't know the stats, but I I remember I've watched quite a lot of Eagles, and I feel like I've seen him get more involved. I have no mm-hmm. I I can't inform anyone of the stats or how he's done. I just I've seen him way more involved the last few weeks than I had previously. Eight and a half feels like one two catches max so So, i'm going to give you a lot of credit on this you are right five catches for 30 yards last week Mm -hmm. three for 58 before that one for five against the giants that was 28 three and then cleveland four for 67 you're Mm -hmm. at you're you're 100 percent right right okay on the on this one so i've watched a lot of eagles this year you're as soon as it came out of your mouth i knew you were right (laughs) (laughs) it's a a good one uh jim you like any of these receiving props I'm trying to think who in because again I'm predicting that this is going to be the Eagles up. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who in garbage time when the Eagles go prevent is Cooper Rush going to be throwing the ball to. Now Corbin's brought this out a couple times. I don't want to play any of these numbers ahead of time. If that's the case, I'm going to wait for them to go down, and then I'm probably going to be looking at Jake Ferguson. If the pass rush is getting home and Rush is a step behind, I'm going to be looking for on those last couple drives of the game, three, four catches from Jake Ferguson. Yeah. Maybe we can get him at like 30 yards. We'll see what he does earlier. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll just try to attack it live. Interesting. Um, let's see. Let's move on to the Jets and the Cardinals. Well, Jim, if you like Aaron Rodgers, props, to, uh, who are you picking receiving-wise? The yardage is the, is the tough part, man. Uh, oh, you I mean, like the touchdowns. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Like uh, the yardage is just very, very tough to predict. Um, I think the Brees Hall 28 and a half is a little bit low. If they can't get the running game, they've shown they're going to throw it to them. Braylon Allen's not going to be eating into a whole ton of receptions as far as that goes. Where I will go with this is Jeremy Ruckert over seven and a half yards. He's getting more playing time. And We've had some weeks where he goes over. He gets one to two looks a game. Um, I think they've realized that Tyler Conklin is what he is, which is a good catching but slow tight end. And you have a young tight end that brings a little bit more speed. So I expect him to get the looks. I'm not willing to pick whether it's going to be Devontae or Garrett. It's just too closely lined. Um, They both could go under. They both could go over. So I'll take the low-hanging fruit with Jeremy Ruckert. That was a play I liked the beginning of the year. Been yeah. sprinkling it in, but had pretty good success with it. Corbin, what do you think? Uh, the only thing I like is uh, Harrison over 46 and a half. I mentioned uh, the Jets' uh, pass defense. I think they're just going to take him away completely. I don't understand this number. He's gone under in five of the last six, except that one game where he exploded. Uh, I don't know if he's very good, quite honestly. I just, I don't, see, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see him get into this total. So uh lions and the texans jim any of these guys strike your fancy not really going nuts over the passing game in this one no corbin pass all right uh let's move on corbin to your alternate play all right so nice work last week here uh so let's talk about some alt lines that you found for a nice minus 111 price so let's uh, walk us through these three pieces yeah i think we hit the alt and the same game parlay if i remember last week so really feeling good about these kind of alt pieces no same game parlay this week i couldn't find a game that i nailed that much on so we're gonna take uh kamara over four receptions seven straight games carl loves a check down there's not many weapons in that Saints uh, offense. I think they're going to be down in the game. He's going to get the workload. Uh, so four receptions is nothing really for him, I don't think. Uh, we mentioned I think the Eagles are going to kill the Cowboys. So we're taking them, alt spread minus one and a half. Or you can just take the money line. It's not really much difference. The Cowboys are just bad. Uh, four straight wins for the Eagles, although they did fumble around last week and make it a bit sweaty towards the end. Divisional game, they're going to want to put as many points on the Cowboys as possible. No Dak. I don't see the Cowboys offense being a particular threat. 
And then we're going back to Javante Williams, two plus receptions. Again, I mentioned it last week. He's hit it every game except week one, and he cashed again last week. Uh, if Bo Nix is going to throw, which I think he's going to have to at some points during this game versus the Chiefs, he he's he loves a dump, uh, a check down to Javante Williams. Uh, he yeah, two plus receptions is nothing really for him. So uh, wrap all of that up for minus one eleven. Nice. I'll, you know, I'll I'll tell my embarrassing story. Last week, I uh, sent a message. I was like, man, great call on Javante Williams over two receptions. He's already got six. And then I was looking at the uh, rushing attempts. Yep. I was like, I was yeah. like how did – it's like, yeah, I guess I guess I, he hasn't probably caught six catches in the first quarter. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, pretty bad on my part. All right, Jim's going to do his sack props. Just want to remind you guys, we've got our darts plays for the rest of 2024. Only 49 bucks. We're 29 so far. Corbin laid it out why this is just such a great sport to bet. And this is the time of year because of the yeah. upcoming tournaments where we get the best value. And also, guys, uh, NFL Week 10 pack is up. Uh, six straight winning weeks in the NFL. Very, very hard to do, but the plays have been on point. So grab that over at wagertalk.com. All right, Jim, let's do uh, Inside the Trenches. We're talking about the 49ers and the Buccaneers. We are. We are. So the Buccaneers, they have become a bit of a one-dimensional football team. They are trying to run the ball with minimal success. I wouldn't say it's a full-on commitment to the run, but Todd Bowles realizes that he's got to give these players a couple carries to keep them somewhat honest. What we saw is that when we get to even teetering on a passing down, the defenses are going after Baker Mayfield. So this O-line that has played very, very well this season kept Baker very clean and giving him the chance to throw for these two touchdowns a week. They're a little bit under siege now. We saw a lot of hits to Baker, a lot of hits to Baker in that game. He was beat up by the end of it. I think this trend is correct. It's trending in the direction of we're going to see a lot more pressure on Baker Mayfield going forward in this spot. San Francisco is starting to gel a little bit on their defensive line. Nick Bosa is becoming settling into the player that we expected him to be to start the season. I think we would all agree he was fairly quiet. Um, I think they're starting to settle in and we're going to see a lot of pressure on Tampa's uh, offensive line. That being said, Tampa Bay's defensive line, I'll tell you, watching Vita Vea at his age and his yeah. weight play is one of the most fun things to do if you like good defensive line play. I mean, the guy is an absolute wrecking ball. The strength of San Francisco's offensive line is going to be in their left tackle. Trent Williams. So I think Vita Veda can cause some problems up the center here. So this is half the reason why I was interested in both the quarterbacks rushing yards. Um, Cause I think both these teams are going to be able to get pressure on each other and force these quarterbacks to make good decisions and bad decisions at the same time. Love it. Love it. Great work. Uh, Corbin, Corbin had to leave. He's going to the man city game uh, today. We're recording on Saturday. So, all right guys, that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, use the, uh, Use the promo code, or not the promo code, the code word of the day is sold. Put that in the comment section. Appreciate all you guys. Tell us your best bets. You know we love reading the comments and responding to them. So good luck on your place, and we'll see everyone later. Good luck, guys.